I'm at Annie's. Forgive all the background noise. We've got a forklift going on around here, but I love how they set up the beds with their flowers. So you can get an idea, and they have the markers. Look at those, some beautiful pinstamens, dianthus. Look at these delphiniums. Mine get taller, but I like them a little bit shorter this way because you can really enjoy them at eye level. This Alstromeria, oh, gorgeous. I'm gonna try planting some in my garden this year. They're supposed to be hardy in my zone. So, anyways, more dianthus. Look at these beautiful things. Look at this color here. Oh, snapdragon. I've never had snapdragons that tall. I'm assuming that's a snapdragon. I'll get the name of it. And all these people. I love to have the rustic rock walls. Last time I was here was earlier in the season and they didn't have everything blooming. This is just amazing and so inspiring. And of course, I have a big cart to buy stuff. I'm going to be very frugal with the videoing because I am more interested in shopping. But I just wanted to give you a taste of it. Look at these poppies. And this pretty thing, I think I remember the name of it, but I'm going to see if it's hardy. Is that a verbascum? I'll find out. Just so lovely. Down here it looks like a Roseanne geranium. I have that in my garden and love it. It does beautiful. So many fun things. Here's geranium parvi. Look at the little tiny leaf structure on that. That one I don't have. I'm going to have to see if that one's hardy in my zone and uh, incorporate it. I just love the rocks. Somehow I'm going to get rocks moved into my garden. It will help too because it will act as a heat sink. So when we get really cold dips, then they'll hold heat and release it and help the plants to come through those. Oh, look at this sweet pea. It might get glary because I'm getting up into the sun, but look at that thing, how tall that is. Wow. To live in a mild climate where you can get an early start on these things and have them grow so huge. But I'm not complaining. So this bed over here in the center, looks like it has a lot of drought tolerant specimens in it. I love how they do the echeverias over the rocks and osteosporums and then this rustic seating area. It's just so fun to get great ideas from places like this. Forgive the glare if there's any, I'm directly right into the sun, but look at this. This is called Ranunculus Giant Buttercup. Isn't that so pretty? I can't do fuchsias in my garden, but look, I wish I could. Look at this gorgeous fuchsia. More beautiful, beautiful things. A lot of uh, natives, a lot of hardy, drought tolerant. Look at this salvia, isn't that absolutely gorgeous. I have this one, um, it barely gets going in the heat of summer before, um, that's Amistad before the frost hits because I just don't have the right climate for it, but I do love it when it does come up. And more of the delphiniums. These are the New Zealand ones that I grow from seed. Though I lost my dark blue, it's called cobalt, cobalt blue. So I'm hoping they have some in stock here because I know I can pick them up. Look at, look at that orange poppy. Isn't that just fantastic? So here's the trays and trays and trays of plants to buy. They have them marked with pictures, zoning, growing conditions, and now I'm going to shop. Good morning, garden friends. So I showed you where I was going to start shopping at Annie's Annuals, and this is my haul. I was gonna share with you what I purchased and kind of why. So I did tell you I was looking for this delphinium. This is cobalt blue because mine was eaten by gophers. I'm assuming it was gophers because when I dug it up, it had no roots left and there was a gopher tunnel under it. Um, I did take some cuttings. I don't know if they're gonna take. So I wanted to make sure I had another one. I wanna plant this in another place in my garden and um, I have some spray that I'm spraying, a deterrent for the gophers, and I hope it works. But you know, it, 
the ones I had lasted years before the gophers got to it. So um, that's why I'm deciding to try again. My other, I have some more out there that are doing just great. So let me read my tags for you, and then I'll put a picture up of what they look like um, and the instructions with them. I did try to take pictures because that's Annie's annuals. I love it. They have a, um, a picture of the plant in bloom, and then it has an explanation of how to take care of it. So I wanted to get some Veronica's, um, and this one is called Perfectly Picasso, and then this one... Um, I'll have to look the name up of what it is um, because I pulled the tag out. And then I have, I'm not even sure where I'm going to put these. I just know I wanted them and they are a perennial that will come back every year, bigger and better. Because I want lower maintenance and that's my attempt. So, uh, but I do want a full garden and a lot of things at Annie's are also natives. So I'm trying to go toward native and those that are drought tolerant. So those are my goals. Now this one is supposed to be wonderful. It's a native for pollinators. And this is Origeron, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, Glaucus, Wayne Roderick. And it's supposed to spread even by seed of its own volition. And it has beautiful little flowers that the pollinators absolutely love. And it is deer tolerant. I haven't had a lot of issues with deer, but that doesn't mean I won't. Um, I used to have a lot more pr deer pressure, and I'm not sure what has um, changed. But So, pinstamen, yes. I did start some pinstamen from seed. I seem to have a hard time starting pinstamen from seed, so I wanted some that were a little bit bigger, and I figured they were going to bloom. Okay. This one is Silene Diosica. Now, this one um, is catch fly also known as, and it's very similar, if not the same, as my red campion. Um, the leaves on this one look a little bit different than the one I have, so I was gonna try this one too and see if it is the same. Ooh, I have a little uh, Katie did on there. Perfect. Oh, here's one that I um, made sure to pick up because they said this is like, people can't kill this one. And it's a poppy and it's called Flora Plino, and it's an orange, but it's like, you can't kill it, Poppy, and it's perennial. So this one I wanted to try, and I have an area where I have a lot of blue salvias, so I think this would be perfect contrast or complement with the orange. Okay, Verbenia bonarensis. This is lollipop. This one stays shorter, whereas my regular Verbenia bonarensis gets like four feet tall. And I love it. I, it reseeds, and this will reseed as well. Um, but this one stays shorter. So this is perfect. I love how it sways in the wind, and this really, really attracts the pollinators. Okay, I think I did all of those. And this one is... i got to remember why I bought it. Oh, this is a tansy. This gets covered with tiny white flowers. Tanacetum nivium, white bouquet tansy. And um, it's just beautiful. I love white flowers because they provide a calming contrast with all the bright colors. And this, it says it would reseed and rebloom through the summer. So perfect for me. Now this one, Luisia Long Pilata, Little Raspberry. And this is also um, deer tolerant, drought tolerant. So just I just love the colors on this. See how it has the apricotty and then the fuchsia together. So beautiful. Here is, and I bought this last year and I killed it. So I wanted to, and it's an impatient, but it's impatience tick. And I'll put up the picture for you so you can look at it. But it will return. It's supposed to be tolerant, uh, cold tolerant, or in my zone. So I'll try it again. I don't know how it could be. Maybe it dies back um, to the root and then comes back. I'm not sure. But this time I'm going to be sure and get it in the ground. Last time I had it in the pot still. And when it got hot, it didn't make it. This does not like hot weather. So I'm going to give it another go and see. It has these beautiful white flowers that I just really wanted to try. I have a perfect spot for it, and I'm gonna get it planted there soon. 
verbascum. I've been wanting some verbascums. And this one, I think it's the one I showed you on the video, Violetta. If not, I will put up, no, this one's not the one. Did I get another one? Aha, yes I did. This one, um, I'll put a picture up, drought tolerant, another drought tolerant. I'm in California, I need drought tolerant. And here's the hybrid, oh, this one is Southern Charm, yes. Rose pink blooms on spikes, 20 to 25 to 30 inches tall. So another beautiful one, another drought tolerant specimen, and will come back every year. This, this is the Black Eyed Susan Vine. This one's called Pink something or other. Oh, I can't remember and I don't have the tag on it, but I'll put the picture up. I had it last year. It grew down my back wall um, and also up on a, a, a little obelisk I had in my garden. I loved it so much, I could not find seeds for it. I was hoping it would reseed out in front or come back. It's supposed to be, it's borderline um, hardy in my zone, but I don't see evidence of it coming back up. So I had to get another one because it provided just the most beautiful bloom and it spread so far. It was worth it. I think I paid $8. So for that kind of enjoyment, it was worth it. Helenium. I've always wanted to try helenium, so I bought me one. This one's Helenium Autumnal Red Shades. So that is something I wanted. Here is an oak leaf hydrangea. I've been wanting one of these to put over on uh, the back side of my front garden over by the rhododendron. And I finally went, this was peewee, peewee hydrangea. So I wanted one of those, I got it. I tried to start some from cuttings last year from a friend's garden and they didn't take. So I was just gonna buy me a plant. Sedums, I love sedums. I have plenty as edging. I have the plum dazzler. That one I just love and I'm putting it in areas and this stuff just thrives even in the driest, hottest conditions. So this one is pretty good size. I probably will cut it in half and then plant it as um, to start a border in front of um, one of the beds. So that is my plant haul from Annie's Annuals and I was going to share with you, where did I put it? Oh, the things I got at um, Philoli in their garden center. And I had I got two Semper Vivums. I have this one, which I did not get the name tag for, unfortunately, but I don't have this color. This is such a deep green, then with the hint of red in it, rouge. And then this one, this one's called Carnival. And um, it has the little fuzzy petals, or whatever you call those little leaf things. And then it has the touches of red on it. So I have like 20 different types of Sempervivums. Sempervivums are hardy down to zone four. And that's why I stick to those rather than Echeverias. I do love Echeverias, but they won't live through the winters here. While these will, I could put them out in the garden, they'll live and spread and do great. Uh, the other thing I got, let me get it. I so this, this hardy geranium, I love hardy geraniums. They fill in, they're easy to divide, um, they're low growing and they make a great mass at the feet like a roses. Um, and this one is Biocovo. So it has the light pink flowers and look at the little delicate stamens in the middle, how they're just orangey. I just love that contrast. And I know it will do great here. Um, I bought one last year from Annie's Annuals and it's called Bill Wallace. I absolutely love it. I'll put a picture up of it. In fact, I can take you out to see it right now. It's doing beautifully. It's already been blooming. And for here, this early having things bloom is just wonderful. So that is my plant haul of my from my weekend away on our trip. And we had a fantastic time. Um, just the little getaway. Thankfully, uh, Annie's Annuals and Philoli, they're only like a two and a half, three hour drive from us. So it makes it like a nice little weekend getaway. And we also always visit, because my husband's a pilot and loves planes and helicopters, we um, also go to Hiller uh, Aviation Museum. And that's always super interesting. I always learn something new when I'm there, even though we've been a few times. And uh, it's just enjoyable. So I am going to make sure, this is from my, and it's kind of filled in here, this is for my back garden. This is from my garden planner. 
and I am finding how much it's helping me. This I put down, this is the graph where I had um, laid out my secret garden in the back and where everything is. This is the bench in the corner and where I have different things planted. It's planting day. I mean, I really need to get, I want to plant my petunias out. Look at these. Here are the ones I had, I got really super tiny in a six pack. And look at them now, look at that beautiful color. Isn't that gorgeous? So I got to get these planted. There's so much going on. I'm having a hard time um, getting things accomplished because we're having work done here. So I have to stay out of the way of the worker and um, try to get stuff done at the same time. And there's, I'm so far behind schedule. Um, this time of year I do get behind because it goes from freezing cold where I can't put anything out to now it's very warm and I need to get everything out. So to get it going, but it is what it is. So I hope you enjoyed the visit to Annie's Annuals and my plant haul and I will take you out right now to see the Bill Wallace geranium that I promised to show you. So here is my Bill Wallace hardy geranium and you see the delicate little purple flowers. Isn't that gorgeous? This was covered. See it's already, well it's starting to put on many more and some have already dried up. So I'll come in and trim those off. You don't have to. It'll just keep blooming. But here from last year Look, it's already reseeded here. Now these ones I don't necessarily want here, so I will dig them up and uh, pot them up and relocate them. It looks like there's several. Now in, on the tag it did say it would do that, so this is no surprise for me, and I'm fine with it. Now right over here is where I had the Lime Nicotiana, um, and I loved it. I didn't buy another one this year. I'm hoping, because it's supposed to reseed, or and or come up and be hardy in my zone, but I don't see any evidence of it yet. That doesn't mean anything. It could be that's just been too cold. So I'm gonna keep this marked off. I have this right here to mark it off so I don't inadvertently dig stuff up there. 